Bawat isyu ay hihimayin at malalimang aaralin na iwan natin ang intelligence sa experts dun sa intelligence agencies ng gobyerno. Walang kontrobersyang palalampasin. Walang tanong na hindi sasagot. So needless to say, sir, kasali pa rin ang smart man. One on one, kasama ang mga politiko at mismong mamamayang Pilipino. Samahan niyo po ako tuwing linggo para alamin ang bawat katotohanan sa likod ng kontrobersya. Halos isang buwan na po ang nakakalipas matapos maupo sa pwesto ang mga bagong opisyal at miyembro ng Sangguni ang Barangay at Sangguni ang Kabataan. At nung mga nakarang episode nga po sa ating programa, tinalakay natin, no, nireview natin yung mga naging delays patungo nga po sa 2023 Barangay at Sangguni ang Kabataan elections. And nakilala din natin yung uh, kung paano na muno ang isang Sangguni ang Kabataan at isang Barangay Council. no And uh, ngayong araw, titingnan natin kung paano ba mamuno dapat talaga yung mga miyembro ng Barangay Council. At tayo bilang mga botante at residente, alam nga ba natin kung ano yung mga serbisyo na dapat natatanggap natin mula sa mga inilukluk natin sa pwesto? No? Dapat po importanteng-importante kung malaman natin yan dahil dapat din nating malaman kung anong dapat nating gawin na aksyon kung sakaling hindi ginagawa ng mga leader ng ating komunidad ang kanilang responsibilidad. At para talakayin yan at mabigyan pa tayo ng mas malinaw na detalye Narito po makasama natin, Under Secretary of the Department of the Interior and Local Government, Sir Lord Villian Maver. Yusek, magandang tanghali po. Welcome po sa programa. Thank you for inviting me to your program. Magandang tanghali din po. Mm -hmm. Alright, first question agad, Sir. Ano ba yung mga duties and responsibilities dapat na ginagawa ng miyembro ng Sangguniang Barangay at SK? What separates their um, duties from those of LGU, of course? Mm, okay. Well, in terms of the barangay po, uh, the first thing to remember about them is that they are very close to the community. In fact, a very interesting fact is that the Sangguniang barangay, you know, on the one hand, the regular duty is to pass ordinances. Pero at the same time po, sila ay nagsisilbi pong ano, peace officers ng barangay. So ibig sabihin, on the one hand, Kumbaga, mambabata sila. Pero on the other hand, parang ini-expect na sila din ay kasama sa mga nagpapatrol sa barangay, nag-maintain uh, ng peace and order. So, kumbaga, ano, marami silang responsibilities compared sa mga ordinaryong, ano, ordinaryong mga legislators. So, nakikita dito yung closeness nila sa community. Tapos, uh, nabanggit niyo po yung ano, sangguniang kabataan. Yes. Opo. Now, in respect of the Sangguniang Kabataan po, sila po ay, uh, first, in the first place, yung uh, Sangguniang Kabataan chairman, the chairperson, is actually considered a ex-officio member of the Barangay uh, Council, mm -hmm. yung Sangguniang Barangay. And automatically po, siya ay nag nagiging chairman ng Committee on Youth and Sports mm -hmm. sa Barangay Council nila. Yes. No? So, nasa Sangguniang Kabataan po ang implementation ng Barangay Youth Development Plan. Mm -hmm. So, baka ang akala ng, ano, ng mamamayan natin ay ang Sangguniang Kabataan ay para lang sa pagpapaliga or mga ganon. Actually, they have a very critical role po. Yes. They serve to implement the Youth Development Plan ng Barangay. So, nandun po yung ano, nation building, uh, nandun po yung uh, promoting a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. among our youth. Uh, civics and uh, morals education, mm -hmm. ganun po. Yes, the nine centers sir, for youth participation. Yes po. Uh, po. Um, given this, sir, ano ba yung mga consequences kung sakaling hindi nila ginagawa yung kanilang mga responsibility? Halimbawa, nakikita ng mga residente na wala namang mga project, no? Despite mm -hmm. being given millions of funds. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ano bang consequences nito? Uh, basically po, pwede silang matanggal sa pwesto, no? Kasi... Uh, mabigat pala yung responsibilities nila and in that regard, they're performing public functions, public services. So, ang um, pag napansin po ng citizens natin na hindi ginagampanan yung responsibilities, pwede pong magreklamo sa uh, sa Barangay Council. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, pwede rin mag-sampa uh, ng, ng uh, administrative cases against them. 
And these uh, administrative cases, uh, basically, pwede silang matanggal po sa pwesto mm -hmm. kung uh, hindi sumusunod sa responsibilities required of them po. Alright. But what if yung mismong members po ng Barangay Council, yung hindi nagpo-perform ng maayos? What uh, if they're inefficient? What if they're ineffective, uh, sir? Kanino ba pupunta yung mga uh -huh. residente? Then we go one step higher, which is to the city. Uh, every barangay is part of a city or municipality. So then they can go to the municipal council naman po, or to the city council, eh, or kung Tagalogin natin yung uh, sangguniang panlunsod or, yes. oh, um, or sangguniang bayan. At pwede po ma-suspend, uh, pwede po matanggal sa serbisyo yung uh, itong mga hindi sumusunod sa kanilang mga duties and responsibilities. All right. So hindi nga kailangan ng anomalous activities yung mismo hindi lang paggawa ng kanilang responsibilities yes. can be grounds for for suspension and even you know pagkatanggal sa pwesto nila. Yes, yes. Like, oh, oh, and in fact, uh, if there are uh, if there's evidence of criminal activity, uh, at the same time pwede po rin ano mag-file ng complaint sa ombudsman at mm -hmm. pwedeng ma-file po ng criminal case at uh, diyan uh, even heavier po yung parusa, pwede pong makulong, ano, or, uh, and uh, meron din penalty of ano, perpetual disqualification mm. from public office, meaning hindi na po pwedeng ano, maging public official, any kind of public official po, mababar na sila, mababa right. na po sila. And uh, believe me, I've seen it happen many times. So there are consequences. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we'll go more into that later, sir. No. Uh, what about the usual problems na uh, dinudulog sa DILG? Of course, uh, mm -hmm. responsible dito ang DILG. No? Yes, um, ano yung mga madalas na problema sa isang barangay na nire-report sa department natin? Is it uh, about environment, sanitation, or um, peace and order? What are the pro problems, sir? Uh, well, actually, very broad nga. So every one of those things that you mentioned is a uh, concern yes. of uh, our barangays and uh, lahat yun, tinitignan ng DILG. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of uh, supervisory, our supervisory function over the barangays, the DILG has uh, actually in every, uh, in practically every municipality uh, and in every city, we have a field officer mm -hmm. uh, whose, whose job is to work hand in hand with the public officials of that city to advise them on, on the things that they should be doing. Uh, for example, to make sure that their anti-drug abuse council is meeting regularly, that their youth council and environment council are, are preparing the necessary regulations and to call their attention kung uh, nakikita na, uh, let's say, hindi nagbi meeting yung, yung, uh, yung ADAC, yung anti-drug abuse council. Yes. So uh, that's that's the supervisory function that we do. It's just to to call attention, and in some instances, if there are really things that that uh, if there are anomalies or things that need to really be called out, then we can actually do an investigation and then uh, even refer cases to the ombudsman, for example, kung kailangan ng ano ng uh, in depth, even more in depth investigation. Mm -hmm. All right. Kanina na pahapiawan natin sir yung mga responsibilities ng isang mm -hmm. barangay council and sangguni yes, ang kabataan. Um, of course, para magawa nila yun dapat uh, meron silang pondo, meron silang budget. Uh, yes. Who decides kung kung magkano ba yung dapat binibigay na budget mm -hmm. sa barangay council and SK? Kasi yung SK of course they get ten percent no of the budget of yes. the barangay council. So who decides sir? Yes. Well, there is a there is a fund given to them called the national tax allocation, and that's uh, drawn from uh, the all uh, uh, income taxes nationwide. Tapos yung nag uh, ka calculate ng exact amount is the Department of Budget and Management. So there's a okay. specific formula naman uh, under the law. So that is uh, apportioned to barangays, to the different barangays, and that's. Uh, a part of that formula is uh, based on the classification of the barangay, whether it's a uh, first class, second class, third yes. class, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that also is yung population ng barangay. So normally those barangays with a higher population would, would get a bigger share. Again, All right. Mm -mm. Um, what about, sir, yung budget ng, ng SK? Kasi nabanggit ko nga na they get yes. the 10%. 
mm-hmm. of the fund of the Barangay Council. Mm-hmm. So, sinong nagbibigay nun sa kanila? Nakaseparate na ba yung fund ng Barangay Council from that of SK? Or yes, yung po. Barangay Council yung magbibigay sa SK? Well, it, it comes from the Barangay and they're required to uh, release it to the SK. Oh, so, there will be a separate account then for the mm-hmm. SK. Yeah, for the SK. Yes, but uh, in, and in that regard, there are, of course, uh, certain... Uh, financial controls and uh, accounting and auditing mm-hmm. standards yes. that they're required to comply with. For example, uh, uh, they're also subject to the authority of the Commission on Audit. So, yan po nakabantay po sa, sa proper use ng funds na yun. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yung budget nila, sir, included na po dun yung kanilang sahod? Yes po. Yes mm-hmm. po. Uh, they're allowed an honorarium. Uh, if I may just mention, uh, for the uh, typical Sangguniang Kabataan mm-hmm. member, the amount that is prescribed by the Department of Budget and Management yes. is around uh, 21,000 per month. All right, and, that's mm-hmm. for, for an SK chairman, sir. Uh, for an SK member. For an, oh, SK, oh, for an SK chairman, it's slightly higher at uh, 23,000 per month. So that's, that's allowed under the uh, local budget circular issued mm-hmm. by the DBM. Po. I see. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Uh, so that's under the budget din po of the whole Barangay Council, no? Yes, sir. Po. All right. So, paano pong gagawin doon? Halimbawa, kung yung isang SK, uh, ang SK chairman lang nila yung may honorarium. Well, uh, that's something that they have to take up first with the Barangay mm-hmm. Council, not the Sangguniang Barangay. And uh, they can make the necessary representations. Uh, nandyan naman sa batas yun. So, it's, it's a matter of informing them, mm-hmm. I would assume. Now, if there, uh, if if there are not any good reasons given as to kung bakit uh, hindi nabibigyan niyo itong itong tamang honorarium, yes. then they can uh, then they can complain. Well, one step higher than the barangay, then they can go to the uh, city council or municipal mm-hmm. council, yung mm-hmm. Sangguniang Bayan or Sangguniang Panlunsod, no? Because the Sangguniang Bayan or Sangguniang Panlunsod is in charge of overseeing the barangay budget. Yes. So kung hindi nabibigyan ng tamang honorarium yung SK members, that's that's a matter that should be brought to the attention of mm-hmm. the city council or yes. uh, the municipal council. Yes. All right. So linawin lang po natin uli no. So 23,000 for SK chairman. Yes, yes. Yeah, oh, that's oh. their monthly honorarium. Yes. And oh. then it's around 20,000 for for the members. Yes, around uh, 21,000. Mm-hmm. Basically the local budget circular established uh, uh, parang an equivalent salary grade. So yeah. pag SK chairman it's considered salary grade 10 and uh, SK member salary grade 9. All so right. so mukhang may standard talaga mm-hmm. under the local budget circular. Mm-hmm. All right. What about the barangay council members sir? For example, the mm. chairman. Mm. Yung uh, punong barangay mm-hmm. is considered salary grade 14, which mm-hmm. is uh, about 33,000 per month. 33,000 yes. per month. Uh, okay. A regular Sangguniang Barangay member yes. is same as the SK chairman, about 23,000 per month. All po. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so ang pinakamataas lang sa kanila sa barangay council is, or and yung naiiba is yung barangay chairman. Yes, Right, po. sir. Okay, so... Dapat, sir, may, of course, may auditing sa budget and expenditure yes, so, uh-huh. uh, ng Barangay Council as well as yung SK. Mm-hmm. These are all public funds uh, and uh, these are all subject to audit by COA. So definitely there should be uh, transparency, there should be information to the residents as to what the money is being spent on. Alright, so dapat uh, pinapaalam nila sa kanilang mga yes, nasa kupan. Yes, okay. okay. Um, all right. So, nabanggit yun na kanina sir, pero mas linawin pa natin no. So, sino mm-hmm. nag-oversee dun sa pag-audit nung mm-hmm. nung budget ng buong Barangay Council as well as SK? The, the Commission on Audit po. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've seen that they take their responsibility responsibility very seriously. Mm-hmm. So, definitely if there are anomalies, um, there will be consequences po. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there an other agency or are there other agencies sir or aside from uh, the COA? Uh, yes, so there are other agencies that would be involved in looking at this. Uh, Depending mm-hmm. on um, the function. You know. For example, uh, the, the DOH or the DSWD may have uh, programs where they, they download funds to, 
to the city or to barangays. So as part of their as part of their over, over, oversight function, mm -hmm. no? if if they download funds to for certain programs, they'll also have some kind of monitoring to make sure that nag, nagagamit yung pondo sa purpose mm -hmm. for which it was intended. Yes, sir. So ang DILG ah uh, walang separate function sa pags uh, walang separate oversight uh, functions dito sa sa auditing ng, ng... Uh, not not directly in terms of auditing of funds yeah. but definitely you can say that we audit in terms of performance in terms of mm -hmm. operations so what we're um, our 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 mandate is not on not so much on the financial side yes. of things but more on the operational and uh, and uh, in the program their... program side yeah. of things so so we want to make sure that that they're following the prescribed things that they should be doing. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges, sir, in monitoring their activities? Well, we have a, we have a vast country you know, with a, our population, I think is 110 million, and that was uh, just of the recent census. I've seen recent estimates that our current population may be as high as 116 million. So it's a, yes. it's a vast, vast country, thousands of islands. We have 42,000 barangays. So the, the challenge is really in, in making sure that, that we have uh, a big picture, a clear picture of, of all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, the, the department is, is, uh, is very professional and we have, we have many dedicated men and women. I think the vast majority of public officials, despite what you might read in the papers, the vast majority of public officials love their country and want to do, the, do their job right. So in a way, that makes their job easier. Of course, hindi po natin matatanggal yung mga allegations nga of what, as what I've said, uh, ineffective and yes. inefficient uh, Barangay Council members as well as SK members. Um, are there plans on the side of DILG sa pag-aamienda po uh, to, to change um, anything uh, about Barangay Council and SK? For example, meron bang plans ang DILG mm -hmm. or na nabawasan yung members ng SK or uh, bawasan yung fund or yung budget na binibigay natin sa Barangay Council? No, I don't know if any such plans no? or uh, on the side of the department, I can say na wala naman kaming... Uh, thrust or or uh, plan na ganyan. Uh, those matters we leave to the wisdom po of our legislators uh, uh, but uh, on the side of DALG kung meron pong me, kung meron po tayong nalalaman na mga anomalies or yung mga mm -hmm. hindi sumusunod sa ano sa tamang tungkulin or, mm -hmm. or hindi ginagampanan yung tamang tungkulin po uh, please lapitan po ang office ng DILG uh, we'll we'll do our utmost to see that uh, any uh, any uh, concerns are promptly investigated, mm -hmm. and that if people need to be brought to justice, then we will do our utmost to make sure that that that, that happens. Paul, mm -hmm. uh, does the department receive a lot of uh, complaints regarding this, sir? Uh, madalas bang nakakatanggap ng reklamo yung DA, ang DALG when it comes to um, corrupt or ineffective uh, barangay officials? May mga nagre-reklamo ba talaga? May mga lumalapit ba mismo sa department? Well, we have, well, as I said before, we have 42,000 barangays. So, I wouldn't say naman na madalas in relation to the to the overall number of barangays that we have. I mean, we, we get complaints. Uh, we get complaints uh, from time to time. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. And yes, there, you can say that uh, these these uh, complaints are lagging nanjan, mm -hmm. but in terms of the vast majority of the of these forty two thousand barangays, I mean we found that generally they 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 function as they should, they they take care of their people as they should. There are a few bad eggs. Uh, yeah. They there are always a few bad eggs, but definitely, uh, see secretary secretary Ben Hur Abalos has been very adamant uh, his trust is always towards good governance our our secretary was a mayor himself mm -hmm. for so many years and he knows very well the 
the kinds of uh, things that that local officials are required to do at uh, alam din niya ang lahat ng ano ang lahat ng uh, kalakohan that mm -mm. they might come up with uh, bistado niya lahat yes. yan uh, his uh, with his vast experience uh, they they cannot they cannot get anything over him so rest assured po kung may nalalaman ng public na mga anomalies or whatever please just uh, come to our office mm -hmm. Uh, we'll have it investigated and rest assured po, we'll make sure na uh, ma, ma pin down itong mga salarin kung sakali man. Mm. Alright. Yusek, what do you think are the loopholes uh, that give way to these anomalies, uh, uh, anomalous activities? Ano kaya yung meron tayong, ano kaya yung problema sa, sa governance mismo ng well, barangay uh, and SK? Ultimately, I think it comes down to um, well, I hate to say this, but uh, we have uh, sometimes a culture, maybe sometimes of too much, uh, maybe of too much reverence for mm -hmm. people in authority. Minsan may hiya tayo to to call out people, to to complain. Mm -hmm. No, a Filipino culture in a way is uh, very conformist. Uh, mahilig tayo na ano? Yes, sumunod lang ng sumunod. Very mm -hmm. important sa atin yung pakikisama. Mm -hmm. Diba? It's, uh, it's, it's a very good aspect of our culture, but at the same time, it has negative elements din. So, kailangan um, uh, paigtingin ang culture sa atin of, of, of the willingness to voice out pag may nakikita tayo. If we see something wrong, to, to, uh, to, to, to say na this isn't right and we have to do something about it. All right. Uh, nabanggit ko kanina, sir, na may na-interview ako uh, from uh, Sangguniang Kabataan in one of the barangays in Pasay. Uh, and nakwento niya sa akin na before daw, parang sinabihan sila ng LGU ng Pasay na uh, their barangay hall, their office, uh, was almost going to be demolished because of its location. Kasi, sir, yes. yung kanilang location, katabi sila ng isang parang estero siya. Okay. No? Uh, and... The reason why it's going to be uh, demolished, according to the LG, was because of, of, of its location, nga, because it's, uh, it's dangerous, no? parang walang safety, hindi secure. Mm -hmm. no? And uh, I asked them, yung SK po, if, if they had plans of renovating it. And then they told me na they couldn't nga daw kasi nga, uh, hindi rin sila binabayagan ng LGU kasi medyo delikado rin daw na i-renovate mm -hmm. yung, yung kanilang barangay hall and office. So, uh, pag, sa instances na ganito, sir, sino bang, um, sino bang responsible for, 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 you know, solving this? Paano yung uh, saan sila lilipat or sino bang mamamahala mm -hmm. dun sa uh, pag-solve ng ganitong problem mm -hmm. when it comes to, ganun nga, location-wise? Yes. Um, oh, oh. yes sir. Well, in the first place, uh, it's illegal to build next to an estero. Mm -hmm. they're, they're under the law. May easement dapat dyan. So, uh, in the first place, may pananagot dyan as to why that barangay hall was built right next mm -hmm. to an estero in the first place. Now, normally, the barangay hall would be something that would be taken care of uh, by the barangay itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, in reality, of course, maraming barangays na hihirapan for that. So they look to the city that they are in or the town that they are in for support. So primar primarily, yung responsibilidad po to, to take care of this problem would be the barangay itself. Pero pwede silang ano, humingi ng tulong sa siyudad or sa LGU, or sa LGU the, the bigger LGU that they are inside in for, for financial assistance if they, mm -hmm. if they so need it. All right. So... Sila pala mismo yung mag... Kasi in the first place pala, hindi nga naman pwede under the law na magtayo ng barangay hall beside yes. an estero. Yes, oo. Oh, oh. Alright. So, sila pala mismo yung, yung mag-solve din ang problem yeah. na yun. Oh, dapat, oo. Oh, kasi in, kung sila pala yung naglagay ng barangay hall doon, yes. paano nangyari yun in the first place? Mm -hmm. oh. Alright. Um, since uh, na-move, sir, no? Ilang beses na-move. Uh, mm -hmm. Nagkaroon ng delays sa barangay and SK elections. Um, this coming, yung susunod na election natin, mm -hmm. uh, from the recent one, 
uh, after noon is gonna be 2025. Two uh, years lang. Yes, uh -oh. sir. Do you think two years is enough for them, sir? Well, you we have to remember that the barangay is is it's a LG that's very close to the community. So I think two years is plenty of time to do a lot of good. I mean, uh, yes, it's it's a short time. So maybe in terms of of very long term programs, baka mahirapan sila. But but there's so much that 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 can be done. I mean, from from just making sure that garbage is collected properly, from ensuring peace and order, uh, from uh, uh, from taking care, for example, of uh, dangling wires, uh, the andaming quick wins na na pweding magawa that can have an instant impact sa buhay ng mga citizens natin. So I believe yes, uh, they they should not be discouraged by that, but just focus on the immediate things that they mm. can do. All right. Um, they kwento rin sa akin yung ibang sentiments ng ng ibang members yes, po ng SKN. Uh, barangay Council members. Um, Na-mention yung kanina, sir, na hindi naman pare-parehas, of course, yung uh, amount ng funds na ibinibigay for, yeah. for each barangay. Of course, it depends on the population. No? Uh, nabanggit nyo kanina, the, the larger the population is, the, of course, the bigger the mm -hmm. fund is. Um, pero ang sabi nila, uh, sa mga economic, economically disadvantaged uh, barangays, mm -hmm. yung iba ron, uh, kukaunti lang Mm -hmm. yung yung residents mm -hmm. so uh, whereas yung ibang uh, yung ibang barangays mm -hmm. um, maraming residents but then they come from a from an economically advantaged uh, barangay for example uh, dito sa Pasay for example mm -hmm. kung kung nasan yung yung barangay ng 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 Mall of Asia mm -hmm. no so maraming residents but then most of them uh, parang Maraming buildings, maraming establishments. Mm -hmm. So you can say na it's it's way more economically advantaged mm -hmm. than than those of you know ibang barangays. Like mm -hmm. for example, yung iba naman sa Makati, mm -hmm. di ba? May mga private subdivisions, mm -hmm. maraming residents. But yes. then, uh, mapapaisip ka rin na kailangan ba ng mga residente doon? Yung, or ka, ano pa bang kailangan ng mga residents doon when it comes to the projects from, from the barangay? Mm -hmm. So uh, ang tanong nila, parang ano bang say ng nang uh, paano ba nagde-decide yung DBM dito if uh, mm -hmm. sila yung may say doon sa um, amount ng fund na binibigay doon sa Barangay Council? Well, aside from the population ng, ng barangay, the uh, each LGU has a particular classification mm -hmm. uh, from fourth class uh, all the way to third, fourth, and fifth class. So normally, if you... Uh, your uh, barangay is not so advantaged economically, you'll be in the lower rankings, mm -hmm. third, fourth, and fifth class. And uh, it's part of the formula po that uh, you'll be given a greater proportion of financial assistance. Mm -hmm. So, so hindi lang siya uh, talaga based uh, purely on population mm -hmm. alone. Uh, Depende rin sa income classification yes. ng, and uh, yung development index ng barangay. Pero uh, if there are uh, concerns about uh, how that formula or can it be tweaked better to, to serve our, our less advantaged mm -hmm. uh, barangays and LGUs, well, th that's, that's really something that's uh, up to the wisdom of our legislators as to how that uh, formula can be tweaked. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if there are proposals from the public as to how we can adjust that formula, I, we, we'll be... We'll be happy to study that po. All right. So, mm -hmm. kino consider naman pala, no? Yung, yung, yes. yung income. Of course, hindi yes. lang yung population. Yes. It's more on the income then of the of the barangay. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Um, isang concern din sir ng ng SK members, some of the SK members. Um, syempre kapag SK member ka na, uh, kailangan mong magpatupad ng projects and para yes. magpatupad ng projects kaya kailangan mong ayusin yung maraming papers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, ang sabi nila, syempre mga bata pa naman sila, of course, part sila ng youth. So, medyo hindi pa sila ganun ka-familiar with these things. Um, meron naman daw kinokonduct na seminar ang, ang LGU when it comes to uh, seminars like this or crash courses like yeah. this. But then, um, it's very minimal daw po, sir. And 
uh, when the LGU does, um, it's it's done parang out of town pa. And what, ang problema pa is, hindi yung LGU yung nag, nag-suspend ng kanilang or gumagasos for their expenses. Okay. Ibig sabihin, sir, expenses pa rin ito under ng SQ. So, iisip nila, imbes daw na isama na lang nila dun sa out-of-town mm-hmm. seminars, gagawa na lang sila ng project. Right. So, uh, are there possibilities, sir, na, na mag-conduct pa ng, ng se- more seminars yung LGU na sana um, ma-cover naman nila yung, yung budget or expenses? Ah, okay. Well, well I'm glad you mentioned that because that gives me the opportunity to mention that uh, the DILG, in, co- in cooperation with the National Youth Commission, has a lot of training resources because yes. actually the law requires a mandatory training for SK um, uh, both before they assume office and even in office may continuing training. Mm-hmm. So this can actually be done online and there these, these training materials are available online. Uh, siguro after this uh, interview, I can provide you with uh, the, the links or or the way this training can be accessed so that this can be disseminated then. Baka hindi lang aware ng mga ibang Sangguniang Kabataan mm-hmm. members natin na meron palang mga ganitong resources yeah, which, which they can access online. Mm-hmm. Oh, para wala nang, wala nang gastos to, mm-hmm. ano, to, to have this sort of training. Alright. Uh, I mentioned earlier, sir, yung mm-hmm. nine centers of youth participation. Mm-hmm. And na-mention niyo rin po, sir, na mo... Um, more often than not, kilala kasi yung SK as parang nagpapaliga lang daw yes, or minsan uh-huh. nagpapageant. Uh, ano ba yung mga dapat main aspects, sir, on where they can focus? Ano, saan uh, aspects ba dapat nakafocus yung projects ng ating SK? Well, the vision, yung vision ng batas for SK is really more on nation building. Eh. Diba? The, that our youth will become... Uh, participatory in 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 our hopes and dreams mm-hmm. for a better country w- which is why the law is so has emphasized so much itong mandatory training ng, ng ating SK so uh, in terms of what SK should focus on well they're uh, they're supposed to implement the youth uh, the youth development plan ng barangay and if we drill down to mga concrete details nyan, that would be, well, a lot of that would be, will be uh, education ng ating mga youth. Like, for example, <clears throat> in terms of uh, healthy lifestyle, in terms of uh, anti, anti-drug education, mm-hmm. uh, civics and morals. So it's, uh, it's more of, uh, I think the focus should veer away from just simply athletic activities mm-hmm. in themselves but more in in if there is athletics it should be a tool for education so dapat may mga seminars may mga yes. outreach mga ganun po all uh, right so ano banggit niyo kanina sir uh, hindi nawawala yung mga nagsasabi sa inyo na mga um, yes. complaints uh, about uh, uh, of course anomalous activities uh, so ano pong um, action na ginagawa ng DILG dito what do they do mm-hmm. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Well, first we have our, kung may mga complaints sa amin, usually we have our field officer do an investigation. Mm-hmm. No? And uh, since our field officers are embedded in the community and they work very closely with the local government, they know the right questions to ask at sinong pwedeng lapitan in order to get the real story on what's happening. Now, pag... Uh, nakagawa ng report yung ano, field officer uh, namin and may nakuha kaming information, we can then refer that uh, either to the ombudsman or to the higher level uh, LG, the, the higher level uh, council. In other words, kung, yung, kung problema sa SK or sa barangay, pwedeng i-elevate sa, sa city council or municipal council. So from there, pwedeng magkaroon ng on the one hand, an administrative case. Uh, an administrative case will decide whether or not ma-suspend or matanggal mm-hmm. sa serbisyo itong, uh, itong airing officials. And as for the ombudsman, pwedeng magkaroon ng criminal case. At dyan po, decide kung magkakaroon ng 
uh, imprisonment uh, magkakaroon ng ano ng formal trial eventually leading to imprisonment and uh, the uh, possible very serious penalty is perpetual disqualification mm-hmm. from public office so mababan yung tao he will never again be allowed to become a public official of any kind so napakabigat mm-hmm. po okay. and and definitely i've seen it happen many times so baka baka akala ng ano ng mamamayan natin na uh, this this does not happen because you know, of things sensational news in the media no but but it definitely happens i've seen the wheels of justice turn so many times uh, i'm a lawyer by profession and and i've i've seen such cases happen and believe me i mean let this be a warning to those na nagtatangkang ano to to commit uh, illegal acts definitely our secretary ben hur abalas will never tolerate that and when the wheels of justice turn they might turn slowly sometimes but they are merciless the the ano the consequences are merciless so sa ating mga kababayan mm-hmm. please it's not worth it it's not worth it magsilbi na lang tayo ng tama All right. Yung mga nagko-complain na ito sir mismo mga residente rin yes. ng ng barangay yes. no. Yes, yes po. All right. So bukod doon uh, when it comes naman or bukod doon may mga iba pa bang like uh, problems na mm-hmm. na dinudulog yung ating residents. For example, yung na-mention ko kanina na walang project na nakikita. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or meron bang nagsasabi or nagko-complain na residents na walang auditing na nagaganap? Hindi po namin mm-hmm. alam kung saan napupunta yung fund ng barangay namin. Mm-hmm. Well, the complaints are more, uh, not so much on the auditing, uh, but more on the kung, kung paano na, uh, yung mga programa kung, kung may nagagawa. And also, the complaints sometimes re- relate to yung uh, kung may masyadong red tape sa mga ano, sa mga sa mga permits, halimbawa mga barangay clearances. So usually mga ganun yung mga ano, yung mga uh, complaints. For example, pag uh, may mga sinisingil na kung ano ng mga fees na wala naman sa batas, uh, may usually mga ganun yung mga, yung mga complaints namin. So more on the nararamdaman nila sa everyday life nila. Mm, all right. So five years yung nakalipas, sir. Uh, ever since nagkaroon ng, ng election. So, uh, anong hopes ng, ng DALG for, for, for this new batch of, of the officials or members of our Barangay Council and SK, of course? Yes. Well, our, our secretary, Ben Harabalos, has, uh, he has been a mayor himself for so long. And, well, his general hope is for, for these officials to burn the candle at both ends i've seen our secretary work i know how how dedicated he is uh, grabe po siya magtrabaho and he expects each and every local official to exhibit the same dedication we we often hear uh, in the newspapers you know complaints about uh, you know corruption and anomalies and so on but there is another problem which is uh, even more insidious mm-hmm. Uh, because it's not as noticeable and that's simply people uh, not doing their job na uh, yung ano na, nakaupo lang uh, content to just uh, draw their salary but not having that drive to work uh, and that drive to work and to serve is with our secretary and we hope that that drive is also with every local official All right. Sir, last na po. Babalikan ko lang yung sinabi nyo kanina. Uh-huh. Lilinawin ko lang po. Yung honorarium ng, ng SK and ng barangay, um, uh, separate siya from the fund na binibigay? It's part of the fund po. Ah, po it's part of the yes, fund. Yes, doon po okay. kinukuha. Yung uh, kanilang honorarium. Okay. So there's a certain percentage. Um, it should be... So out of the 10% ng barangay funds na, na binibigay sa kanila, Uh, up to 25% of that can be used for purposes of the honorarium. So that uh, so there's a percentage of the funds na pwedeng gamitin for honorarium and then the honorarium per person may uh, local budget circular po from DBM na nag allocate na hanggang ganitong amount per person. Mm, okay, so under na pala yun. Yes po. 
All right. On that note, sir, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for you, joining us yes. on our program. Um, Department of the Interior and Local Government Under Secretary Lord Villanueva. Magbabalik po ang aming programa. Nasa 42,000 newly elected barangay officials sa buong bansa ang sasailalim sa tuloy-tuloy na training para maging mas handa sila sa pamumuno sa kanilang komunidad. Ayon mismo kay Department of the Interior and Local Government Secretary Benhor Abalos, tinatawag ang programang ito na Grassroots Renewal and Empowerment for Accountable and Transparent o Great Barangays. Layun anya ng training program na ito na hasain at sanayin ang mga hinalal na opisyal ng barangay sa lahat ng aspeto ng pamumuno at para ihanda ang mga ito sa mga hamon sa kanilang komunidad. Ilan sa mga tatalakayin sa programa ay fundamentals o mahalagang aspeto sa pamamahala sa barangay, lalo na sa mga importanteng probisyon ng Local Government Code, Development Planning, Budget and Finance, Participation, gayon din ang Public Ethics and Accountability. Samantala, giit ni Abalos, hindi lang dapat pagtuunan ng pansin ng mga opisyal ng barangay ang mga infrastructure project. Hindi raw dapat ito ang maging indikasyon ng pag-unlad ng kanilang barangay. Hindi lang para may magasto sa ibinigay na pondo. Dapat daw nakatoon ng kanilang mga proyekto sa totoong kailangan sa kanilang komunidad. Ilang insidente ng pagpatay sa mga naging kandidato at bagong halal na lider ng barangay ang naitala. Mga Pinas lang na barangay captain, barangay kagawat. Karaniwang dahilan, walang iba kundi ang posisyon na makukuha sa barangay. Isa pang patunay ay ang higit sa isang milyong mga kababayan nating nagsumite ng kanilang Certificate of Candidacy. Maliwanag na indikasyong tila napakarami ang gustong maglingkod sa kanilang komunidad. Pero gaano nga ba kalalim ang kagustuhan nilang magbigay ng serbisyo sa kanilang mga kabarangay? Gaano katibay ang kanilang dedikasyon na pagsilbihan, hindi ang sariling interes, kundi ang mga taong naghalal sa kanila sa pwesto? Gusto nyo ng pagbabago, pero luma at walang kwenta naman niyang sinusuportahan at binoboto nyo? Dati, sa inuman ko lang sila nakikita, ngayon sa tarpolin na. Wala ka na silbi sa bahay nyo eh. Magsisilbi ka pa sa barangay? Deserving kaya yung nanalo tapos puro pa inom ng ginagawa. Bakit di na namamansin yun si Kagawat? Dami nyo palang plano. Bakit di nyo ginawa nung nakaupo kayo? Tapos babalik kayo. Ang dami nyo namang pinangako. Magpaliga ka na kaya agad? Matagal ng talamak ang pag-iral ng ganitong mga persepsyon tungkol sa mga opisyal ng barangay. Kung anuman ang tingin ng mga residente sa mga lider ng kanilang komunidad ay refleksyon ng kanilang panunungkulan o kawalan nito. Sa bawat katiwali ang nangyayari, sa bawat pagtalikod sa pagsisilbi, maaring matakot magsalita ang tao. Pero hindi ito bulag dahil nakikita nito ang totoo. Samahan niyo pumuli kami sa susunod na linggo para sa mas malalim na talakayan at paghimay sa mga isyong kailangan niyong malaman. Ako po si Pamela Adriano, ating siyasati ng katotohanan sa likod ng kontrobersya. Music